Sprinting is an amazing sport, where top athletes will train an entire season just to improve their times by 0.1 seconds, building their strength, explosive speed, and perfecting each stride to run as fast as humanly possible. And even though I don't have the speed or athleticism of an Olympic sprinter, or even a high school sprinter for that matter, high schoolers are really fast actually, I wanna see how much I can improve if I train exclusively for speed and acceleration for 30 days. And since there is no better test of raw speed than the 100 meter sprint, I went to the track with Cam to record my day one time running the 100 meter. Time. 15.30. So it turns out when you spend the better part of three plus months with the only cardio you get being walking, you end up slow as <laughs> I'd like to say I'm disappointed in my uh, time today, but I can't say I'm surprised. First thing I noticed, your stance is a little too wide. So you wanna start off uh, with your stance quite close together. So I can tell your back leg is really far behind. And so that just like, wouldn't allow you to really push off for the first step. It's like an airplane. So you start low and you slowly come up and then you take off. This is Ryan Chen, a personal trainer and track athlete in the 110 meter hurdles. I sent Ryan my day one footage to see what I can do to improve this ungainly mess that was my first run. So basically in sprints, it's a thing where you kind of want to have quality reps. You don't really want to fatigue your muscles because uh, fast twitch muscle fibers are quicker to fatigue. And so you don't want to train it slow. So you want to be doing lower volume, but higher quality reps. Trying to take Ryan's advice, I break up my training into two to three sprint days per week and two days of plyometrics to improve my explosive strength. Add in one to two lower body workouts per week for strength and injury prevention, as well as trying to stay consistent with my usual upper body workouts. Because my sprint and plyometric exercise are focused on activating my fast twitch muscles and I need to get high quality reps in, I'm only exercising those groups for about 20 minutes a day. The larger amount of time is spent training with various mobility and active stretching that include skipping, high knees, and other mobility exercises that I look really awkward trying to figure out. As much as getting the workouts from Ryan is helpful, I still need to improve my running mechanics, so I'm not wasting energy on inefficient or out of control movements when I'm running. So on day 12, when our schedules finally lined up, I met up with Ryan at the track to smooth out some of the mistakes I'm making in my 100 meter sprint. Basically in sprinting, like you wanna be, you wanna have mobility, but you also want your body to be quite stiff because that's how you're able to be very explosive and bounce off the track. Basically, you're, you're driving your knee quite high and it doesn't have to be too high. So just go to until you're parallel to the floor. Yeah, so like right there, block your knee. So when I say block your knee, that means stop where, you, where, you, where your midline is, all right? There you go, yeah. Drive your elbows instead, yeah. So A skips. Nice, oh, okay. And in sprinting is always, you're dorsiflexing, which means you're activating your ankle, your toes are up, but you're not necessarily hitting the ground with your toe up. You know, when I tell people toe up, they think it's like this. No, it's not. It's like, like that. In addition to driving your knee right, just parallel to the floor, you're going to have your toe up at all times. Yes, exactly. And then when you bring it down, yeah. underneath you. And uh, let's, let's see an acceleration now. Nice. Oh, improvement, improvement there already. Nice. Ryan wants me to fall forward before my first step and then drive from my glutes to put as much force backwards as possible. I keep my head down for the first 20 meters rather than coming right up like I did on day one, gradually taking a vertical posture and going into my full stride. Let's go, boy. <laughs> After working with Ryan, he's added some additional active stretches to my warm-up, targeting quads, hamstrings, calves, as well as upper body mobility. 
Again, this warm up lasts almost 25 minutes before I move into my running mechanic drills, like skipping and high knee runs. With each drill, I'm trying to mimic an aspect of my running form. Knees at 90 degrees, feet dorsiflexed, and my body tall and upright. The last drill involves a cycling motion with my feet, similar to pedaling a bike. Again, dorsiflexing, but still landing on the balls of my feet, so my heel never touches the ground. And when I finally move into my sprints, the goal is to transfer what I've been focusing on through these drills and apply it directly to my running form. One thing Ryan explained in our session together is I want to be training for my sprints at as close to top speed as I can manage every time. So I don't want to be wearing myself down and doing poor reps because I'm tired. So I'm going to take 60 seconds between my first sprint and my second, then it's going to be 90 seconds, two minutes. So I'm always giving myself my best rep as I possibly can get. And I'm only going to do about six sprints today because I don't have a lot of endurance and strength that I've built up yet. But the part is doing the reps right rather than just doing a whole bunch of quantity and getting slower and slower. The same principle applies to my plyometric workouts, which I've started doing one of these per week on the sand to try and reduce the daily impact on my lower body. Again, I'm working in the five to eight rep range, trying to explode off the ground quickly with as much force as possible. While using sand for plyometrics is helpful in reducing impact, consistent training on sand has been found to actually reduce speed and explosiveness in athletes, as the sand provides too much absorption to really activate your fast twitch muscles, which is why I'm only using it for one workout per week. Additional plyometric drills that I look really uncoordinated doing include alternate leg bounds, which mimic the running stride, only with more time in the air between each stride. The other is straight leg running off the balls of your feet generating your power from your hamstring and glutes while keeping your feet flexed at the top of each stride. I found both these drills better to do on the track or astroturf as when I tried them on the sand, it really didn't go well. From here, my training was just a matter of repetition. Three sprint days per week, two plyometric days, and extended running and mobility warmups before all of these workouts with some foam rolling once I was done. I did try to stay consistent with, with my weight training through this goal, but I fell off a bit from my typical five to six workouts per week to around three to four, which really didn't seem to impact my progress any, so that was fine. The only question left is how much improvement I can really expect to see when I only have two full weeks to train between my coaching session with Ryan and the date of my final run. So it is the final day and I am back at the same track that I was training with Ryan earlier in this goal. I am not gonna lie, I'm feeling really stiff, really sore today. I took all of yesterday off for recovery, but even still when I did my first lap around the track, I feel pretty tired still, my muscles feel really stiff. So I'm doing some extra foam rolling and I'm gonna go through about 45 minutes of warm up and mobility work before the run. Also to make this last run a little more competitive, I have challenged Cam to race against me. Cam is a distance runner who can beat me at anything from a kilometer to a half marathon, but I wanna see if with my training I can maybe just edge him out in a short 100 meter sprint. So I'm not much of a sprinter, but I know I'm a better runner than Brendan, so I'm feeling pretty confident that I can beat him in a 100 meter sprint. No matter how much training this boy's done, I'm a better runner than Brendan. Once I finish my usual warm up, I go through three practice accelerations, just covering the first 20 meters to work on my mechanics and timing. Then, once Cam and I are ready, we line up at the start and wait for the count. That was that. You cooked me. What was the time? 13.75. <laughs> what was your start? Wait, seriously? 13.75. <laughs> that is so much faster. What did what you start at? 15.3. Yo. <laughs> Damn.
That's crazy, dude. Hey. I felt like I got off to a decent start, but then I just saw you getting a step ahead, a step ahead, a step ahead, and I didn't really feel like I could do anything about it whatsoever. I was hoping to land somewhere in the 14 second range. To actually be below 14 seconds is, that's really cool. That's, I'm really happy about that. I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Magic Spoon. So a major part of training and recovery on this goal, or any fitness goal for that matter, is my diet. And if you're looking for a fast and healthy snack, or you just have some nostalgia for your favorite morning breakfast cereal, then you're really gonna wanna check out Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon takes the fun and flavor of morning breakfast cereal, and they put it into a product that is sugar-free, contains 14 grams of protein, and only has four net carbs to each serving, and just 140 calories. Originally, I tried to film this spot in a way that showcased the colorful variety of all of Magic Spoon's many flavors, but I forgot to turn my mic on while I was filming, so, that was a big mistake. Anyway, my two favorites from Magic Spoon are their fruity and cinnamon flavor. But you can try Magic Spoon's most popular flavors with their variety box set. That will include frosted, fruity, cocoa, and peanut butter. And when you order, use the code GOALGUYS for $5 off any purchase. Magic Spoon is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, Magic Spoon will refund your money with no questions asked. Click the link below to get $5 off your order, or go to magicspoon.com slash goalguys to get the same deal. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Magic Spoon, and thank you to you guys for watching. See you in the next one.